Yeah, let's not look at the choices here yet. Concave lens. Inform images that are so um, they're going to be virtual, um, upright, and shrunk. How do you know? The chart. Yeah, you just have the chart memorized. Good. I don't know if you get full credit for that, though. So let's see, how can, we, how can we prove this algebraically? Now, if you look at the choices, all he cares about is whether it's, uh, well, it's pretty clear that which choice would you pick? You would pick virtual, right? Yeah. So let's just use algebra to prove that it's virtual. That's not that easy. Let's see if we can use algebra to prove that this would be virtual. Without looking at the way he did it, of course. Right. That's, that's, that's good. That's what we're trying to prove. Virtual means S prime is negative. So this is what we're trying to prove. That's good. Well, because the focal point is negative and S is positive. So? So that's prime is negative. Okay, good. So how do you know the focal point is negative? It's diverging. Yeah, he told us it's diverging. So this term is negative. Uh, is this term negative or positive? Positive. Because the uh, image distance is always positive for a simple problem. And then the only way that we can get a negative on the left is if there's at least one negative term on the right. Yeah. And that means S prime must be negative. So that's, that, that's the proof that that chart came from. So everything in that chart can be proven algebraically using the lens mirror equation. It's just kind of a pain to do it that way. It's also possible to prove that this must be upright and shrunk. But he didn't actually do that in the, uh, in the test here, so maybe to save time, we'll go through that together. But that might be a good homework problem if you uh, try to have to see how we can prove these two things as well. Anyway, though, the important thing is it's really helpful to just write down the words here. This is negative, this is positive, so this has to be negative. He's kind of similar techniques for the other two things, too. Right, because if you're putting it into negative S prime over S, and it's have a negative S already, so it makes it positive, so it doesn't invert. Um, looks like he figure that out like these split. Okay, that's right. So this is going to be negative, but S prime is also going to be negative, and this is positive, so the whole thing comes out positive, which is upright. Yeah. That's what we already did in our very first session on optics. We proved that's how we proved that upright is always virtual, ultraviolet, and that infrared is always and that inverted is always real. We just give you a little argument like this. Why S prime is Good. That's exactly what we have to prove. In order to prove that it shrunk, you have to prove S prime is smaller than S in magnitude. It's important here to use the magnitude symbols, the dots, because after all, S prime is a negative number, and S is a positive number. Yeah. But it's the magnitude that you're comparing here. Yeah, how do we know S prime has to be smaller? just from this equation here. And just because it's a negative number. Now, we know that these combine to give a negative. Yeah. So which of these terms oh. is bigger in magnitude? So it has to be. Now, careful. That means this term has to be bigger in magnitude, right? So which of the terms has the smaller denominator? Oh, the other one. The, the S. No, no, the smaller denominator is the bigger one. It's S prime. This is the smaller denominator. That's what we were trying to prove, right? We were trying to prove that S prime was small, not that S prime was big. This is where it's important not to do the steps in your head, but to write them down. The right-hand term is bigger, which means the right-hand term has the smaller denominator. Well, that means that S prime is less than S. So any, anytime you're working with denominators, you have to write down each of those uh, thought steps here. So how would I say this? I would say this is a positive plus a negative. We know that the negative ratio is bigger in magnitude, which means it has a smaller denominator in magnitude. 
you really have to work with magnitudes here to get things to come out right. Smaller denominator in magnitude, that means S prime is less than S, because S prime is the denominator. Okay, and then we have all the proofs there. Like, and like I said, um, so we just proved one of the four cases in your chart. We just proved everything that we saw about virtual images in the chart. It might be a good uh, exercise to really learn to try to go through the other three cases for converging devices and yeah. see if you can prove those too. Uh, for this particular problem, it looks like he definitely did want you to prove that it was going to be virtual because he gave this little argument here that if it's negative, P is positive. That's just we have that door. But he didn't, uh, he didn't actually test the upright and the uh, shrunk fill here. Okay, good. By the way, another good way to do this to get extra credit would be to draw the ray tracing diagram. Yeah. No, see, that's what he did here. Um, by the way, uh, if you're like most of the suits I've been working with, uh, almost all the suits I've been working with need a lot more practice on ray tracing. Uh, it doesn't matter how many times people see it, it, people still get hung up on little things. So um, that's definitely something you want to practice. There's a chart in the book that has basically, there's basically eight different cases because there's four for a mirror and four for a lens. And there's charts in the book that have all of those. You just want to sit down and try to draw each of the cases and then look in the book and see if it's right. You've got to do that multiple times in order to get through that without getting confused. Because some people don't know when they use the left-hand focal point and when they use the right-hand focal point. People don't know when they um, use the trace facts and when they don't. And that just comes with practice. OK. Because uh, you even said at the start here, you want to show formulas, steps, or diagrams. So a good way to get more credit is to draw diagrams if they're right. Okay. That's good. It's always a good idea to label the question with a question mark. Okay. Now, the only problem is, what do they mean by the angle of incidence? Remember, there's two different angles. There's the angle with the surface, and there's the angle with the normal. Well, which one do we usually focus on? Yeah, he didn't sound too confident about that. But that's the normal. That's the, normally the angle that we look, focus on, right? Yeah. The angle with the normal. After all, that's the angle you have to focus on for Snell's law, right? Remember that Snell's law only works when theta is measuring the angle with the normal. Right. So it looks like you have to change which angles are labeled as the thirty-five degree yeah. angles. Yeah. Then, so. yeah. So we actually have to draw the normal. All right. So you were putting the 35 as the angle to the surface, but the conventional definition of the angle of incidence is that it's the angle with the normal. And then you know from the law of reflection, the angle of reflection is the same. Oh, so that makes it easier. So it's just seven. Right. Of course, if we called these 35, we wouldn't even get the right answer. Yeah. Okay because then these angles inside wouldn't be 35 anymore. Now, I don't know, in a way, this seems a little unfair to me. I mean, this is an angle of incidence. This is the angle that you're incident at. I didn't know, I didn't know that you, it's defined as the angle with the normal. But to be on the safe side, um, usually we do work with the angle with the normal in optics. So if the, if the question is ambiguous, you don't know which angle he means, he probably means the angle with the normal, unless he specifically says the angle with the surface. So anyway, now we know your instructor assumes that the angle of incidence is the angle with the normal. Okay. That, that's probably conventional. It's a good way to, good mistake. 